Do you want to grow your own cordyceps, militaris mushrooms, but you don't know much about mycology? You don't have a flow hood? You don't have a pressure cooker? Well, this is a very easy way to grow your own cordyceps at home with very low input. And basically the only things you need to grow cordyceps are some mason jars and some lids fitted with an injection port and a air exchange, usually a micropore tape or just a filter patch so that the mushrooms can breathe oxygen and release CO2. Need some eggs and an oven. And last but not least, the cordyceps militaris liquid culture. And most mushrooms are grown through a sterilization process where you have to sterilize the substrate in a pressure cooker, in a sterilizer, but that's actually not necessary for any part of mycology. You could sterilize everything you need for mycology in your oven. And I don't know why people don't say this more often, but I'm sure pressure cooker companies and sterilizer companies don't want you to know this because at a small scale, you could sterilize everything you need to grow mushrooms in your oven. And I have a few other videos about that if you want to check those out. But this will just be focused on cordyceps. This method is very simple. All you need to do is take about two to three eggs, put them in a quart jar, crush them with a wooden spoon or a knife, and then put on the lid that has an injection port and an air exchange filter. And then you could sterilize that jar in your oven. And what I do for sterilizing this substrate is 30 minutes at 300 degrees. And then after those 30 minutes, I lower the temperature to 250 and I'll cook it for about two and a half hours. So that's three hours total, but it's actually saving you time and effort because usually with a sterilizer or a pressure cooker, you have to wait for it to heat up and get to pressure and it will take significantly longer. So this is actually faster, easier, and less maintenance than a pressure cooker. And then after those three hours of time in the oven, you take out the jars and let them cool. And once those jars are cool, you can inoculate each jar with about two to five milliliters of cordyceps militaris liquid culture. And you don't actually need a flow hood to inoculate it with, but I would recommend using a still air box if you don't have a flow hood. And if you don't have a still air box, you can make your own for very cheap. You can also just do it in the open air. And because you're sterilizing the needle of the liquid culture, the likelihood of contamination is very low because you're only injecting the jar, which is sealed with the liquid culture. So it's very low risk of contamination. But if you have a flow hood or steel air box, I would recommend that. And then after you inoculate the jars with the liquid culture, you need to place those jars in a dark, cool location for about two weeks. And over those two weeks, the mycelium of the cordyceps mushroom will colonize those crushed eggs. And you'll know it's pretty much done when it's covered in white mycelium and, and it may start to turn an orangish color and that's basically when it's ready to fruit and in order to fruit these mushrooms you need to place them under a light so you can either grow them under a grow light or outdoors in the sun but the one thing with cordyceps mushrooms is that they can't fruit over 70 degrees so in a grow tent you want to make sure it's between 60 and 70 degrees with about 10 to 12 hours of light per day to initiate fruiting. And if you wanna grow them outdoors, you can really only do that during the spring and the fall when the temperatures are in the mid 60s. But I would put them in an area that gets a decent amount of sun because they do need sun to initiate fruiting. And just make sure the temperatures, wherever you fruit them, are below 70 degrees because above 70 degrees and the mushroom will go back into a mycelial state and you'll see white fuzzy mycelium regrowing all over the substrate and then you eventually may get contamination or it just won't fruit. So it's better to keep it below 70 degrees. And then for harvesting, you just wanna make sure you harvest them before the spores drop and cover the entire jar in spores. So you'll kind of see these orangish specks on the cordyceps mushroom and that's when you kind of know it's ready to harvest. And for storage, I would recommend either using a freeze dryer a dehydrator, or you could dry them in the sun. You wanna make sure you dry them, store them in a jar with a silica packet to keep them from getting moldy. And then for use, I like to use about a gram of cordyceps for each dose. So I'll make a little tea with about a gram of cordyceps and I'll simmer those mushrooms for about 15 minutes, let it cool, and then I'll strain it and drink it. And you could also make a tincture, but I found that the tea is significantly more effective and it doesn't require you to ingest alcohol which even in small doses is a neurotoxin. So I just would advise against that if you're trying to use it 
medicinally or as a pre-workout or wherever you want to use it. I think that covers everything related to growing cordyceps on a small scale with very limited input. If you need any more help, just leave me a comment. I hope this was helpful. Have a great day. Bye.